Okay, so apart from the, excuse me. Oh, yes. Overhead. So apart from the, the solutions to demonstration one, and the fact that we're starting chapter four, uh, the new topic on vector spaces. So here's the idea. We have, we've looked at so far um, linear systems. We have a solution method. It, it's taken these sort of various forms, but we, it's basically the same method, Gauss's method. And um, then we looked at some technology, some sort of matrix, vector um, technology in the sense that it was it was sort of related to this, but it, but it was sort of a topic on its own. And now we're going to start a, looking at sort of it, these two things will enter, but sort of like a new context or setting for linear systems for, and all the properties. You know, there's sort of like certain um, concepts and special cases and properties, you know, like like linearity, leading variable, free variable. And so we want to give all of this stuff sort of a common context. And that common context is the idea of the vector space. Okay. Now, so let's look at just the words for a second. So the word, so vector is what you think it is. It's it's like the vectors that appeared in the solutions of linear systems, and we've represented them in the matrix technology chapter as um, columns of numbers with, with like one column but arbitrary numbers of rows. So that's what they are. So we're going to have, but the word space has two connotations. It has the connotations of a set of items, set or collection of items. But it's also, um, and, the, and so it's a collection, it's going to be a set or collection of vectors, but the, but the idea of a space is sort of suggests some geometry. So what, what we're going to, so the, and this does sort of correspond to the two um, sources for this stuff. One is sort of the algebra of vectors, and the, the other was, um, in mechanical engineering and geometry and physics, you had your quantities that, that acted like vectors. Now, the vectors there seem to be represented, if you've taken physics or uh, mechanical engineering, as a direction with a, sort of like some kind of magnitude that also has a direction, like a force pushing in a certain direction or a car going in a certain direction at a certain speed. So those things sort of seem to work well being modeled as vectors. And um, there was some geometry, there was a length of the vectors. So now what we're going to do at first is going to, so we have, we're going to approach this sort of context in which we're going to see that this is a natural context for linear systems and all this other technology. Okay, so this is the, the right context or setting. for all this stuff here, for all of the previous things that we've sort of looked at before. These are these are chapters one through three, and now we're starting in chapter four, and this will continue for a while, then chapters four and five. Okay, so the right setting of context, and the way we're going to approach this is first um, examples. We're gonna have examples of vector spaces. Okay, and they'll, they'll be concrete, they'll be different though. For example, we have column vectors. That's the ones you, that's the ones you know about, like this, sort of like there are vectors and columns. But, but you could also, but there's no real reason you, could, you just have to have rows. You could also have like uh, row vectors. And although it, it um, it's something in the interaction of these two you can see where you get matrix multiplication because you're multiplying a row by a column. 
So there's something different about rows and columns in terms of how you're causing them to interact, but that has to do with matrices. And the other one is the gel, this is arrows, right? This is like um, arrows. This An arrow is a uh, direction with length. It's because you can search, so well, this could be this length, we could have one that's longer, and you could have one that points in different direction. So, so these arrows are geometric, uh, uh, a geometric um, item, right? And so these things are what's used in physics and engineering to model various other things. So we're not going to go into those applications, but it's going to turn out, so, they're, but they're, so they have this first example of column vectors or row vectors, and then we have the second example, which is going to be arrows, geometry, and we're going to have two other examples which aren't, aren't useful for their applications necessarily, but they're, but they're useful because you otherwise you sort of think of these things as the standard examples and we need something to sort of get the idea that uh, vectors have, are, are defined not by their um, realizations. We can say this is one realization of uh, vectors, this is another realization, and one is going to be polynomials in one variable. So, for example, what I mean by that is like 5 plus 3x plus 7x squared plus... Um, to x cubed. Well, sort of all the pollen, the, 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 the number here, like the x, the x squared, the x cubed is called the order of the term. And so you could have, say, all the polynomials that are just quadratic. And all the polynomials that are just quadratic form a vector space, just like these vectors are these vectors. Okay. The other one is matrices themselves. So, now this is different from all the other applications. For example, I can treat sets of vectors of a given size as a vector space. Now, these are, this is sort of, this is unusual because it's, it's not like these things here. But in a sense, all of these things have um, something that they have properties the way you usually use them that that give them they have some common properties. So we have these examples and we're going to fact and we're going to then get we're going to look and look for common properties. Okay, and we're going to sort of see okay all these all these particular items have a set of properties so we can say well this is what defines a vector is this behavior. It's not what it looks like. It's sort of like, um, you know, getting the sense of like if you were categorizing plants and you'd say, well, what's common to all plants? Well, plants don't look alike. You have bushes and flowers and trees, but they're somehow all plants. So they have something in common. And so what defines them as plants is those common properties. So that's the first thing. We're going to look at the examples. Then we're going to look at the common properties. And then we're going to sort of see what how far can we get just on the basis of the common properties. Um, Shruti. So, just to clarify, you're saying that polynomials and matrices are a type of uh, vectors. Vectors. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to say we're going to say we're going to say this polynomial is a vector. Okay. Yeah. 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 Ye
But the point is, when you apply this in applications, they may come up in all kinds of different ways. And there are um, other situations. For example, in physics, quantum mechanics is all based on vector spaces. So you, you model a, an atom as a, a vector space of energy states. And so the, the variable is a little bit different, but there's also, um, and you may know, think that that's um, not really relevant to what you're doing. In a few years, it may be that, um, you know, people actually produce commercial quantum computers, and that instead of having just classical computers, you might want to understand how a quantum computer works, especially if they get them going with quantum cryptography and um, other things like that. Now, that may or may not, you know, we don't know the time scale of that. Yeah, it could be many centuries of civilization collapses, so who knows? But anyway, so you have, so that's, but that's our sort of big, the big picture of this chapter. Sort of like we're going to start with examples and a definition. So let's, let's first look at a sort of a zoom of examples. Okay. Um, are there any questions here with this stuff? Oh, no, I didn't want to stop sharing. I wanted to.